In this clip, we're going to learn how to add back in grain once your plate has been degrained. Okay, so initially, whenever we were talking about degraining, you'll notice we were doing that basically right at the beginning before the footage had been manipulated very much. Now we're gonna go to the end. After things have been manipulated, this is where we want to regrain. So after our final merge. So there's a couple of grain things we can do. If I just start to type in grain, you can see I can add grain like this, where I'm just dropping that right in there um, and just kind of seeing, you know, what, what sort of grain that adds. Um, and one thing that starts to happen that's a little strange is by default, it applies it only through the alpha. So if I uncheck that now, you can see it's doing it to the whole image. Um, so this is one way to do it. But in Nuke X, which is what we are using, you also have the furnace core tools. So if I type in F, underscore, you can see that the F regrain node is there as well. And this is just another node that you can use. And you can see here, it's actually got some preset stock. Um, so you can go in and start to actually choose some stock footage um, types, and that may help you to pick one. Now, also, if you want to use a grain clip, you can do that and plug that into this grain pipe here. So again, if you've got grain that you shot on a black, uh, uh, black frame, then you can add that and use that from your original footage, that's going to be the most true to life way to do your regrain. Um, so We'll want to, um, you know, choose one of these. In my case, I can just stick with this regular one um, because we're not trying to match the original footage. We don't know exactly what that was. So I um, just wanted to make you aware that that was available. Um, so if we come through here, you can see sort of how this grain is being distributed between these two, um, the foreground and background objects. So we've got kind of individual control over a lot of different things here. So um, if you want a little bit less red in your grain, you can start to kind of turn that down, green, all that type of stuff. So this one is a really blue grain. As you can see, the intensity is turned up the most on the blue but I can come in and kind of decrease that a bit if I want. Um, one thing that I really like about that other grain node that we were using, the furnace core one, is let's just pull this down and I'll just disable this one, is that you've got this grain amount. So I can pick something, you know, anything under 2K since we're working with, you know, smaller footage, you can come in and just drag the slider on the grain amount. And it's actually kind of a little bit less control than what you have with these. But sometimes that might be what you're looking for. You may not need a whole lot of different sliders. So this one also kind of appears to be applying more to these elements than to the, the background elements. So you can kind of see that the sky isn't really getting uh, the consistent amount that everything else is getting. And that's because it's kind of more analyzing it to be in the dark areas. So, you know, a couple different ways that you can work with regraining your footage. Okay, so once you've played around with that and you figured out exactly how you want that grain to look, um, then you can start adding some of these other options. Now, grain really would be one of the last things that you would add back in. Um, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of room and kind of pull this down. And then the other effects and things that we'll be adding will go in here because we don't want to add effects on top of our grain so that they don't have grain as a part of their... Um, their makeup. So let's actually jump into our next clip and begin adding some more of those finishing touches.